Hey guys, it's Mike from Any Development, and we're going to pick up here where we left off uh, in this video. We're not really going to do the create board method right now. Um, we are going to work on finishing out the form one method, and then add a uh, uh, form one load method to the to our code. And then after that, we'll be ready in the next video to go ahead and finish out our last two methods, which will be a uh, method to create the board and then a method to display the matches. So. Let's go ahead and we'll get started. First thing we want to do, come up into your form one method here, and we want to set up the title label. All right, and how we're going to do that is just label underscore title equals new label, and then we want to set its auto size to false. The reason we're setting that to false is we're going to actually specify. Uh, it's height and width. We don't want it automatically sized into the text in the box. So now we set that auto size defaults. That one should title dot size. And the way you set the size is you uh, just do new system dot drawing dot size. And inside this you'll put a width and a height. So we're going to use 100 by 25. Okay. Um, and then what we can do we can set the text to the label. match um, up and y'all can call that whatever you want um, now we need to set the background color and the text color so that's very simple what we do is just label the underscore title dot back color equals color dot from ARGB and uh, you can get these values here like you can go on the web or on the web and you can find uh, what color um, what the RGB values of the colors are or you can go to a graphic editing program and get them. I just uh, I picked up some earlier, so 66, 114, I think it was, and 74. And then we gotta set the text color, which is label underscore title dot four color. And we're gonna go 200, 200, 200. Okay. Now what we want to do also is we want to uh, align our text inside our label into the center. Both we want to be uh, in the vertical center and the horizontal center. So what we'll do there is label underscore title dot text align equals system dot drawing dot content alignment. And you want to do dot, and as you can see here you have all the choices. You can do bottom right, bottom left. We want the middle center because we want it centered both horizontally, horizontally and vertically. So that's got that label set up. Now let's go ahead and make the labels for the um, how many attempts the player has left and how many correct matches they have. So just copy this and paste it twice. So this one is going to be the attempts. So all this will stay the same. Except right here the text we're going to do attempts. And don't forget your space after that plus number temps dot two string there you go and that's just going to display the word attempts and then have a space and it's going to put out how many attempts are left before the game's over so now we need to get the correct label simply just drag this over erase that Correct in the space plus and I'm correct dot two string. Okay. So now what do we gotta do? We need to make um, two labels that are gonna be for the overlay. Say if the player wins, we need a label that's gonna expand over the board and that's gonna um, say you know you win or start in the next game. Or if you lose, we need a label that's gonna come over and overlay the board that says um, you know, you lose restarting the game. And you'll see how that works a little bit later. So go ahead and just copy this one. Paste it twice. Okay, so we're going to take the text out of this one. And we are simply just going to put um, you win and start a new line. So 
so it brings it down to the next line. Starting next game. Or level. We'll just call it a level. Okay, take this and erase that. And this one's going to be the lose label, so you lose. New line. Restarting current level. Alright. Now, what we need to do right here is we need to take and erase the sizes of these because these are going to have to be changed depending on what level you're on. So, we're not going to set a size here. Okay, so it's got that. And now, um, I think I commented out the create board. See, you will have to come down here, like in the restart tick, comment out the create board, and comment out um, right here, too. And that's only if you want to to test this out as we go. I'm going to show you what this would do. Even though we've got our, our labels coded in here, we haven't added them to the form yet, so they won't show up. Now, even when we add them to the form, you'll notice that uh, they'll be up here because we haven't set a location for them, so they default to 0, 0, which is in the, the top left corner. So how do we add the controls? All we do is come down here. It's real simple. Controls.add and let's go ahead and we have how many controls? One, two, three, four, five. So just copy this. Okay. So now we have five controls. So we'll put lose, win, title. Now that we have those uh, added, if you run it, you'll see they're all up here now. And of course, the lose is on top, so underneath that one would be the win, and then the title attempts and all that. Okay. So now we need to we need to add our uh, form one load method. Now, if you remember in the design view, what we did was all we had to do was double click this and it automatically put our form one load in there. So let's try to recreate that and I'll show you something. So when you double click that f on this form in design view, you'll notice that it adds something like this right here. Private void form one underscore load object sender and args e. Now you notice how we've done stuff like this right here, putting these event handlers on things, and like this. So you probably already, uh, you probably know what we're missing right now, the word this won't work. But let me just, uh, let me show you here. So you know, you double click on designer view, it puts this uh, method right here into your your code for you, and then you're able to type commands in here, and it does it when it loads. So let's put maximize blocks equals false because we don't want them to be able to maximize the screen and that by the little box in the top right hand corner because we're going to dynamically change the size of our form as we go through levels. So let's go ahead and run this. As you can see it's still active and I can do that. So why is that? Um, the reason for that is when you double click on this right here, it automatically attaches the event handler to the form inside of this right here. You'll notice in the initialize component, it'll come down and put something like uh, this dot load equals uh, new event handler, and then it'll put um, like this dot form one underscore load or whatever the name of your form is when you do it. You'll notice it'll put that in there. So all we have to do is come right up here do load plus equals new event handler and we're going to do form one underscore load and now when we run this when the form loads it will run whatever's inside this method here and you can see it's disabled that box so that's just another thing that it that it will automatically do for you when you use the, the uh, design view, is it will add that in. You know, that's, that's all it does basically. Is this stuff that we're doing, like uh, these labels, 
if you were to drag them from your toolbox and put them on there and then set the properties over here for them all it's going to do is it's going to actually put those in here for you so that's what the designer is doing for you it's making you know it's a lot easier a lot quicker to do it that way but it's also important to understand um, how you can do it on your own and, and exactly what your what the program is doing for you so let's go ahead and we'll set a few more things here set some more properties for a form let's see Auto size of true and uh, as you can see this um, the border here you can change the borders if you want um, I'll show you some of those real quick style dot um, I'll show you what dialog looks like here. Uh, you have fixed 3D. I mean, you can do different things. I usually go with fixed 3D. Uh, I'll show you fixed single real quick. But I like fixed 3D. Okay, and let's see. Now back color, color dot from ARGB, and um, I just used uh, 30, 164, and 6, that's what I have wrote down here. And let's see, uh, what we need to do now is set all the font to be our default font, which if you remember we set up here, we're going to use Arial, 10 size, or 10 point, and make it bold. So let's go ahead and we'll run this real quick and show you what it looks like before and then after. There's the green that we set it to. So you see like you lose there. Now if we set this to font equals default font. Run it again. And you'll see it's bolded it and now it's Arial 10 point. Okay. So that is pretty much what we're going to do for this video. Let's see how much time we spent here. It looks about like 12 and a half minutes. Um, not really much more I can fit in without actually going a lot over our time. So I will go ahead and end this here. And then we will pick up um, where we left off right here. Let's go ahead and we'll add our create board in real quick. We'll get ready for this. So create board, calls rows. So that our method is just going to take, you know, as we sit, as we sit down here in the, the timer, we can uncomment this now. You know, it's just going to take columns and rows, and it's going to make our board from there. So um, I will see you guys next time.